Hey guys, Cityscapes here, and welcome back to another episode from The Citadel. It's been a while since I recorded my last voiceover, or a video for that matter. So today is already the 3rd of January, and the festive season is already over. I just wanted to wish everybody a very happy new year and all the best for 2021. Fingers crossed it's gonna be a little bit better than last year. It actually doesn't need much for that. So yeah, finally found some time to record the voiceover for episode 5 of the Citadel. The footage is actually much older. I think I recorded these clips back in November, if I'm not mistaken. So just bear with me if my voiceover is a bit all over the place today. But yeah, so as I talked about in episode 4, today we are gonna continue on that skyline front area. And we will also do some tweaks here and there to the already existing downtown hub. That combined suspended monorail and LRT station wasn't quite finished last time, which is why we are also gonna work on that today. But first of all, let's just focus on the basic outline of the Holoplaza. What I wanted to do in a broader sense is to have this kind of stair-like incline in the skyline height, which means that in the very front I wanted to have very low buildings and then very quickly getting to a certain height in, in the buildings. That's why you can see right behind the downtown hub, I put this wall of skyscrapers to um, really emphasize that look. And yeah, in the front of that whole stuff, I, I thought, what are really low buildings and what would be necessary in a real city close to the downtown, right next to a um, public transit hub? And that's obviously lots and lots of, of parking spaces. So I placed down two of these pretty big parking garages which have that really nice feature that the two monorail tracks are cutting straight through it as well as a pretty wide road. And the top of that parking structure I covered with this concrete slab for a very efficient use of space. For the pedestrian bridge that is connecting the first floor of the downtown hub to the Holo Plaza. I wanted to have some cool features, namely this see-through peephole. With that you can see very nicely that cyberpunky detailed intersection below it. And from time to time you can also spot a suspended monorail passing by. As you probably remember from the downtown episode, I created this kind of outline with the City Walk City Walls glowing network. Here I first checked out the, the bigger one of the two and then decided to go for a smaller one because it's anyway a really strong design element and you don't want to overdo it with certain designs. But yeah, I think this turned out really cool, creating this outline which wraps all around the plaza as well as the downtown hub, which makes that whole build or that whole area in, in front of the skyline feeling very connected. As I said before, we turn now back to the downtown hub and I'm just detailing the front entrance area a bit more. And I have to admit, for me it's kind of hard to not build stuff or detail the city in a way that it looks too nice because I want to really emphasize that dystopian look. But at the same time, you need something to fill the empty areas all around the city. And luckily, that new cyberpunk game has just been released, so you can already see the effects on the workshop. There are tons of new cyberpunk assets popping out from creators, which is absolutely great because now we kind of get an, a variety of cool little props you can use to detail a dystopian looking city, which was really missing before. Another thing that is still missing are some more trash decals and, and props. I think there are in in total just like seven different assets that are representing trash which is uh, not nearly enough when you want to build a really big city because it's gonna look repetitive very quickly. 
But anyway, I think in this case we can get away with a too nice looking area, if you asked me. Because it's uh, kind of super central and, and I imagined that the city pumped a lot of money in the public transit infrastructure and therefore also put a lot of money in the surroundings of the train station, especially the central ones, and make them kind of grand looking. So in this case I went for a concrete pond in front of the entrance, used that awesome looking animated sculpture made by Cordo, and as always put a lot of effort into the lighting with these little light squares. I also put some of these glowing light cubes underneath that plateau where I attach these animated waterfalls to. The area still looked a little bit too dark for my taste, especially for such a central location, and so I put even more lights right underneath the LRT tracks. I then more or less copied that design language to the building right opposite the street. Also created this kind of uh, concrete rim around this pond, which was a bit more finicky than you might suspect, because all, all the angles were far off from 45 degrees, so I had to manually turn all the elements and also adjust all the edges of these concrete beams to match. But it was still kind of a quick build in the end. I then used these Kaminoji water animated waterfalls again, adjusted the color to match the watercolor from the pond, and yeah, just wrapped it all around the building to make it look a bit more interesting, because it's always nice to have animated stuff going on. I mean, as I said, at this stage I was still trying to figure out how exactly I wanted to detail the whole city, what kind of assets I should use, and uh, yeah, this task got it way easier with the recent influx of new cyberpunk assets. The inspiration for this whole area here in front of the skyline came from this screenshot here, which I'm pretty sure is also from the game Cyberpunk. Yeah, if you, if you pause the, the video for a bit, you will notice that on that screenshot as well, you have these very low buildings in the very front, while right behind them, the massive skyscrapers start. Speaking of Cyberpunk 2077, do you guys actually play the game? Do some of you have it? And if so, how do you like it so far? I just had a quick look at it, and so far it seems absolutely stunning, especially the scenery. I gave the game as a Christmas present to my brother, but I definitely plan to use it as a source of inspiration as well. I want to take some really nice screenshots and also show them in these videos here. I think that could be a really nice addition, because from Verville I can use Google Earth shots to loosen up the videos a bit and why not screenshots like the, the one you saw before for um, the Citadel episodes. Okay, so now on screen you can see me preparing some things for the future. I lowered the terrain below that main road there with a terraforming network, placed some retaining walls right next to it to create a safe underpass for pedestrians so they can get from the Holo Plaza or the downtown hub right next to the shoreline. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do here, but I imagine that some cafes or restaurants would look really cool in front of the whole city there. I already built the promenade walkway and I was briefly thinking about a sewage outlet but maybe that's not the very best idea to have it in such a prominent spot. But anyway, as always, if you have cool ideas, please feel free to share them over on my Discord server, especially for such specific spots. I highly appreciate ideas from you guys, which are often more out, out of the box than I can come up with. And yeah, it's just really nice to have some sort of a collaboration going on rather than me just um, 
executing my own ideas. I mean, I think it would be just the right step for this series or the channel in general if we emphasize that the community thing, especially in times when social contact is very limited, we should probably do what we can to, to come together as people or whatnot, I don't know. I think that's a good moment to, to thank my patrons again, Jason, James and Han. Highly appreciate your financial contribution to the channel. It's just a really strong sign of uh, appreciation for, for my work and, and um, it helps justifying the amount of time I spend on City Skylines and this channel. But we finally started working on the focal point of today's episode. As I just saw a second ago, I was covering all of these concrete slabs with ploppable pavement. I did that so I can place decals on top of this parking structure. Unfortunately, the decals don't show directly on the concrete slabs, hence the pavement. Because I want this plaza to have a very distinctive look and it's not working with one uniform ground texture. So I'm really gonna mix some decals together and see what works best to have some interesting patterns and colors for this quite vast place. As you can see, I also placed some brutalist looking row houses under this plaza. This was my attempt to make this whole area a bit busier but it wasn't even close enough so I later on converted the parking garages to residential buildings with a very high number of households and for security reasons I mean this whole plaza is at least like 10 meters up in the air I put some uh, concrete barriers all around the outline of the plaza Now, the centerpiece of the Holo Plaza is obviously a hologram, so I found this amazing looking one, which is from an asset called Holographic Square, if I'm not mistaken. And it's always a bit of pickle with these uh, holograms, because I'm never sure if I should build some kind of a projector or not, and I haven't quite figured out a good copy-pastable mini-build I can use over and over again. So in this case here I just went for a blue-white light circle, which for some reason make my GPU go absolutely nuts. I have no clue what's going on with that asset or my GPU, but it looks too good to get rid of it. So I will just deal with bad FPS in the very front area here of the city. I already knew from the beginning that this is gonna be a quite highly detailed area anyway and, and therefore the FPS will tank here. So since it's quite an area to cover with details, I did my usual move and created this little copy pasteable mini builds. As you can see I found this awesome looking animated ad with the benches. I guess Adam Sandler is also known in this universe. And as I said, I'm gonna use some foliage in this city. Even though I totally forgot to to darken the plants. I think I actually tried it with, with the coloring feature, but in this case you have to use Titan's technique and adding a color rectangle with PO over the whole texture to darken the asset. But I will do that as we progress with the series. Here you can see me placing down all these planters in a somewhat symmetrical order. And you can also see the decals I decided to go for. The outer rim consists of these natural stone floor. 
And for the inner part I went for these dark looking tiles. Seeing the plaza here on the timeline, I have to admit it's almost too nice looking again, but same justification as before. I'm just imagining that this has been an area heavily invested in. It actually makes sense because it's super central and visible from every direction and probably counts even as a landmark for the citadel. I tried to counteract the clean look of the area with placing some trash decals and props. And super important for everything in the citadel is the correct lighting. So in this case I went for a cool looking three-armed streetlight or whatnot for the base illumination and these decorative blue glowing light poles along the outline of the plaza. I think they are Korean pedestrian path lights or something like that. I personally think I really nailed that look of the city front, especially with these di different light attributes and the incline in height and whatnot. But I think at this point it's a good moment to explain quickly how this whole area will work. So as I said we have the, the big par parking infrastructure underneath the plaza, converted to residential buildings, the plaza connecting to the first floor of the downtown hub, and on the side with the stacked highway we have two generously spaced underpaths for pedestrians. So I think this whole area will just be a very busy and pedestrian friendly transfer station. And that's why you can see me now placing lots and lots of these pedestrian paths. On the, I guess you could say shoreline side, I placed these really nice looking glass staircases also on each side of the, of the road there. Then we have two entrances slash exits directly from the parking area. That's obviously the two buildings with the giant P on it. And on the left side of these contemporary staircases I built something like a hotel, but it's uh, nothing special so I didn't show it. But there's also a direct access to the, to the plaza from that hotel. The two bridges connecting to the downtown hub I also fenced them off and put a ticket gate there as well as some guards. And then in the end I obviously had to turn all the pedestrian paths into invisible ones so it looks nice and unobtrusive. I also put some finishing touches on these parking garage accesses. For that I used these rooftop signs. But I guess I'm gonna wrap it up here. I have just one last plea for you guys. I am once again asking for your financial support. You know the drill by now. Every like and subscription is highly appreciated. Comment your thoughts about the episode. YouTube really rewards videos with a lot of comments. So write whatever crosses your mind. If you wanna follow Bernie's petition, you could become one of my Patreon and have early access to these kind of videos and some other perks. For screenshots, you should follow me on Instagram. Twitter is for random rants, I guess. And if you're interested in the technicalities behind these videos, you should really join my Discord server because I will soon start a little channel there where I where I will describe how I built my current PC rig, which sits in a really nice G5 Mac Pro. It was quite a blast building that thing. But yeah, that's been it guys. Really hope you enjoyed and looking forward to see you in the next one.